Hi there, everyone. It's Alan Kennedy of Smith Kennedy Chartered Accountants. Just talking to you about um, uh, zero. Okay, apologies for the slight slow nature of starting the recording. Accounting records are a bit like riding a bike. Once you know what you're doing, it's easy. Okay, and so today is a quick whiz around zero to help you know what to do. Whenever you start in zero, you always start with the dashboard, and in particular, the bank reconciliations. Tip number one, zero, is get your bank feeds sorted out. You have What you have to do with bank feeds is persevere. Sometimes they work first time, other times you have to email backwards and forwards with zero and then process stuff. So let's assume you've got the bank feeds sorted out of these people have. You click on here to reconcile items. Now, top tip number two is have a look at cash coding. This allows you to process stuff really, really quickly. So if we look at cash coding here, and you could pick up everything with a, uh, a description maybe, and then click on all the ones where the rules have been set up, click there, save and reconcile, and then away you go and you've done it really quickly. Or alternatively, if you've got a whole load of stuff which is similar, um, let's say you go from there to there, you hold down the control and shift keys, it highlights a whole lot. And you can put a code in there. Let's say it's 49. And it will fill out the whole lot. And that does it for you nicely. So that's cash coding. Uh, let's uncheck everything and go back to where we were. The other top, on, top tip on reconciliations is the rules. So if you say you don't want to match against an invoice and you want to actually put in an overhead, and this will be typically is create bank rule. Now the key on bank rules is that nowadays, when you, when it comes in sucked in from the bank, you get all sorts of different information. So what one will usually do is delete the top line. Sorry, I've made that field too big. Let's make it a bit bigger. Okay, and then instead of description, put any text field, and then use the word contains, and whatever the words are that you've got from your bank import, put in there, and then it follows down there. Account, whatever the rent account is. Okay, assuming it's not got VAT. There, and then you save the rule, and that will then pick up everything coming through that you don't want to process using purchase invoices. Uh, Okay, let's go back to the dashboard. So that's top tip number two on the bank reconciliation is use rules. Top tip number one will use cash coding. Uh, top uh, and also get your bank feeds sorted out. Okay, now let's show you a report which the accountant will look at, which is called the reconciliation report. You want to check this about once a month to make sure it's okay. So if we go to the last statement download date and key is the statement balance that needs to be equal to what's in your bank account if it's not alarm bells should ring and you should ask why not then here we've got outstanding payments those typically go in when you go into an unpaid invoice such as so uh, if we go on to reports The old fashioned days receivable report, which we love more than anything else in the world. There we go. Show all the invoices. Here, yeah, so this is an unpaid invoice. Let's click on this invoice here. And then when you scroll down and say this has now been paid, and you mark it off, and then it gives you a choice as to what bank account you use and then if you click add payment that will then appear in your outstanding payments or outstanding receipts report now what a lot of clients then do is when the payment comes in they forget to reconcile it and they stick it to sales uh, and that would leave 
that outstanding item there. So we we'll check that once a month and make sure you haven't got any outstanding items or if, if you have, you know about them. Because in today's, today's of not having checks or or uh, paying in slips or rarely, unless you're a business that takes checks, you wouldn't expect to see items in there. Okay, the unreconciled items are what they are, we would say to keep things up to date. So that's your bank reconciliation. Uh, tip number four was have a look at the bank reconciliation summary. Then let's have a look at the reports, okay, and go particularly onto the reports menu. Now there's certain reports we really like and certain reports we hate. I actually don't like a lot of the new reports. So when I'm setting up a new client, I will particularly um, put some different things on my favorites. These would include, I wouldn't use the new A's receivable summary, I'd use the old fashioned one because that allows you to just tick a box and show invoices. It's easier to export and it looks pretty. Okay, the profit and loss account, I wouldn't use the new one. It's difficult to do date compare on it. I would use the old fashioned profit and loss account. Uh, the balance sheet ditto. Wouldn't use the new one. I like the old fashioned one. That's just personal preference. Um, and then the other things that I use, which you might not want to, is account transactions. If you want to see what's going on in a particular account and why it's looking wrong, the general ledger that allows you to get everything out of the system, and also uh, let's see if there's something else uh, on the purchases side. I'll have a an old-fashioned age payables report rather than a new sort, uh, and trial balance. That was it. Now, trial balance is a list of assets and liabilities, but that's sometimes quite useful for seeing what's going on. So I would make all of those my favorites. And then when you click on accounting here, you'll now see all of the things. So I'll go on to profit and loss account because that's probably the first thing you need to look at. And I'd either go on to compare periods or date ranges. Now, the reason I like compare periods, let's do it monthly to start with. Previous 11 periods. and no budget update and then go to uh, standard view is no good we want to go to wide view and then what you have to do is do a comparison as you go across and say do these figures look right so for example here you've got in advertising marketing nothing for the first nine months and then suddenly a massive invoice just ask yourself does that look right in general expenses you've got nothing for the first 10 months and then suddenly two small invoices. Well, it looks to me like they've only just started setting this system up and the real transactions are just starting from about there. Okay, uh, yes, that would be a call. But so you're looking here for variances and saying, do the variances look right? That's the general. The other thing you'll look at is to say, does the ratio of purchases to sales look right? So is your gross profit rate correct? And uh, and then I would look at the balance sheet. So let's go on to the balance sheet here. Oh, uh, what I haven't shown you is the compare periods, and I particularly like show date range. So if, for example, we want to look at something like the last four months, uh, okay, compare with previous year, compare periods. Okay, and this will allow you to see how you're doing relative to the same period in the previous year, which is very useful because often managing accounting systems don't give you uh, that except if you look at the year as a whole or from the previous year end, whereas this can look from any date in essence. And so here, well, they weren't trading in the previous year, but it's useful if you wanna just see how you're doing. Then I would go on to the balance sheet. And it's important to know what's in your balance sheet because it, if a balance sheet right is right, the accounts will be right. So bank balance, if you process the transaction at the same time, that should be what's on your statement. If not, you've got outstanding items, which you can look at on the reconciliation report. Accounts receivable, good point. Mistake we see often on accounts receivable 
if we go on to accounting and accounts receivable, is where the sales invoice gets entered. And when the cash comes in, it gets matched instead of against the sales invoice, it just gets coded straight to sales. So if, for example, you've got something which is really old, you have to ask yourself, is that correct? Or have I made an accounting error? So I would always encourage clients to review their age debtors and age creditors on a once a month basis to look for old items which could be errors. And that's all we do as accountants. So let's have another look at age payables. Uh, and is there anything that's really old there? One that's a couple of years old too. Is that an invoicing error? Have we actually paid it? Those sorts of questions come readily to mind. Uh, typically, we'll see a lot of old invoices in the, the older column, both on sales and purchases, where they say, I invoiced it twice or it's already been paid. Sorry, I've gone out of focus there. So that's other report that you need to look at is the age payables and receivables. The balance sheet, I didn't go down that so much. So accounts receivable, fixed assets, that's where you bought things. That's probably got depreciation in there, which is why it's negative. Accounts payable, you get off your list of age creditors, you'll be looking at that regularly. And VAT, with making tax digital, it's causing chaos on the VAT side. But that should ordinarily be equal to the balance on your VAT return if you paid your VAT up to date. Uh, so, as I said, causes chaos not set up for MTD, or well, that's no good to me because I want to have a look at the VAT, latest VAT return. Um, uh, when it is set up for MTD, then it's fine. There's another quite useful report, if it, particularly if you're on a cash accounting scheme, so if we go on to reports, called the VAT reconciliation report. And if I can find it, it's in accounting, I think, from memory. No, it's not in accounting. There you are, it's in tax. So let me. And that shows the VAT you've collected, the VAT you pay, that's input and output tax, the VAT which is owing, and then the account summary. So if you're on a cash accounting scheme, your balance on your VAT return won't equal the balance on the VAT account because of VAT in age debtors and creditors. But that would explain why there's a big difference. Uh, but generally speaking, it should do, and you need to check that's about right. So uh, that's it, really. That's everything that an accountant will usually do. If you want to see the detail of the transactions, I didn't deal with that. There's quite a good thing in here. Go to General Ledger Report. Click to wherever you want to go from. So let's go from 1st of December. Here, update. And I would also always click show year to date because it makes finding out what's going on a lot easier. And click export to detail general ledger. And that's how you do a lot of exports is click on the export button any moment now. Click enable editing. Now it comes out in a Word 2003 version, which is a bit annoying. So you can't use some of the more complicated formulas that you might use in 2007. And here is a complete list of everything that's going on. Uh, now, navigating around the general ledger is a real problem. So what we usually do is use control F and do brackets. Say we're going to sales. I hope sales is 200. Yes, there you are. And that tells you what's going on. That's a good way of jumping to wherever you want to go to. So control F again, and you see it goes to sales and then goes to the sales total. And you see I put in there brackets 200 and that goes to wherever. If you know the account code, you can see what's going on. It saves you printing off all the account transactions. Um, and you can then have a look and see what, what it is quite difficult to find your way around the general ledger, but that's what we look at. Okay, that's all from me for now. Thank you very much for listening.